The next up, we are going to hear from Melina Markujan studying human communications disorders. Who in here can wiggle their ears? Don't worry if you can't, I can't either. This is my boyfriend's cat, Twix, and he has great control over his ears. So Twix was orienting his ear towards a sound which he found particularly interesting, the voice of the person who was about to feed him, of course. So why do cats do this? Well, the muscle that cats use to orient their ears towards a particularly interesting sound is the same muscle that bats use to navigate and hunt, and the same muscle that elephants use to move their ears to help them communicate with one another and to even regulate their body temperature. This is known as the postauricular muscle, and it's vestigial in humans, or unworking, given the fact that we don't similarly orient our ears in a particular direction to help us hear better. But is it really vestigial? Research has shown that the postauricular muscle actually has some benefit in non-auditory tasks. It's been shown that you could play a Tetris-style computer game, or you could even steer a wheelchair using this muscle. While that's all fascinating, I thought, why is nobody looking at the auditory side of this, seeing as this was a muscle meant for hearing? So that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm conducting what we call a speech and noise listening task, which is exactly what it sounds like. We're playing speech around a participant, and that's all surrounded by noise. And the goal is for them to locate where the speech is. And in doing so, we're recording the postauricular muscle responses using electrodes. We're doing this in what we call sound field, or where speakers are around the individual, or also in a virtual auditory space, which means we're doing this under headphones. We're doing that with the sounds being in front of the individual and behind the individual. I hypothesize that when the sound is behind the individual, this is like when the person's straining to hear behind them. So we would see the largest muscle responses here. But what was really interesting is everything was completely variable. Sometimes the speaker being in front of the participant allowed for the biggest muscle response. Other times it was when the speaker was behind. Sometimes with the speakers, sometimes through the headphones. So with all this variability, where do we go from here? Well, that's why I thought, why don't we try to train this muscle? Non-auditory tasks have shown that this is a trainable muscle and through training processes, the muscle responses become more controlled and more robust. But again, you're probably wondering, well, why even bother training? And what's the point of this? Well, we could implement such technology into everyday headphones or something a little bit more niche and in my scope of practice. What about a hearing aid? Current hearing aids use directional microphones, which really focus on what's in front of an individual, less of what's behind them. So if you're blocking out speech from behind somebody, what happens to a taxi driver trying to talk to somebody in the rear of their car? If we could control the direction in which we want to hear, that would be remarkable for hearing aid technology, or even for headphones for a more spatialized sound environment. So whether you raised your hand at the beginning and told me you could wiggle your ears, or you're going to come see me after this and find out more about these training processes, what we can say is this is like a form of ear evolution. Thank you. <laughs> 